three o'clock, so let's go to start. Okay. Um, boa tarde a todos. Uh, Bem-vindos a mais um webinar da APAN. Uh, espero que estejam todos de boa saúde e já com alguma vontade de desconfinar e de dar também o vosso contributo para a recuperação dos negócios do nosso país. Uh, o tempo já está uh, a permitir, portanto, acho que estamos no, no bom caminho. O meu nome é Manuela Botelho, sou secretária-geral uh, da APAN e vou acompanhar-vos ao longo desta sessão. Uh, enquanto a Associação Portuguesa de Anunciantes é nosso propósito, especialmente em tempos de, de grandes mudanças como as que estamos a viver neste momento, continuar a acrescentar valor à atividade da comunicação e de marketing dos, dos nossos associados. Por outro lado, também é a nossa missão estimular o desenvolvimento da indústria em que estamos inseridos através da promoção de ferramentas que ajudem à tomada de, de decisão. E é por isso, com grande entusiasmo que estamos, que estamos aqui hoje, para lançar o primeiro Observatório de Publicidade Digital em Portugal, numa iniciativa da APAN, em colaboração com a EDGIN. Um, antes de começarmos, queria dizer-vos que, como já perceberam, estão sem som, para evitar as interferências na apresentação, mas podem e devem colocar as questões que bem entenderem aos oradores de hoje, através, uh, através do chat. No final uh, das, uh, das suas intervenções, uh, eu assegurarei que todas as vossas questões são, uh, são, são respondidas. O objetivo deste, deste webinar é apresentar-vos uma parceria que a APAN fez com a Edgin no sentido de disponibilizar em Portugal informação relevante sobre a atividade das marcas online. Esta ferramenta vai permitir-nos avaliar tendências de utilização deste meio para campanhas publicitárias, quer em termos globais, quer em termos setoriais. E porquê é que consideramos que esta é uma iniciativa relevante e um passo importante no nosso mercado? porque uh, temos acompanhado o, o aumento dos investimentos do, no meio digital e, nesse sentido, torna-se fundamental seguir a presença das marcas nesse meio e perceber quem e que setores estão a utilizar mais estas, estas plataformas para as suas campanhas e de que forma, uh, em localizações, enfim, uh, tudo aquilo que uh, conseguirmos, uh, uh, conseguimos ter como informação útil quais os setores de negócio que são mais ativos, que formatos são mais utilizados. E se isto é verdade para o mercado nacional como um todo, é também verdade para cada uma, para cada uma das marcas de per si. Portanto, ter um benchmark permanente daquilo que as marcas estão a fazer também neste meio é, obviamente, um, um, ter um bom indicador de gestão. Nós começámos há dois anos as conversações com a Edgin, no sentido de conseguir ter em Portugal este observatório, que já existe em Espanha e Itália, e durante este tempo tivemos a ajuda e a colaboração de um grupo de associados da APAN, que aceitou fazer com a Edgin, que aceitou colaborar com a Edgin no sentido de avaliar o rigor do seu trabalho e validar o nível de cobertura das campanhas de comunicação que o seu software conseguia uh, alcançar. E todos estes testes uh, permitiram-nos ter hoje a confiança na informação deste serviço e lançá-lo no nosso mercado. A APAN irá passar a disponibilizar no seu site todos os meses um relatório com um conjunto de dados sobre as campanhas publicitárias digitais em curso no mercado nacional, a começar uh, já hoje com os dados referentes ao passado mês de abril. Mas para vos explicar melhor de que é que estamos a falar, vou passar-vos às pessoas que estão em condições de vos mostrar esta ferramenta e toda a informação que ela disponibiliza, melhor do que quaisquer palavras que eu possa estar aqui a utilizar. E são também eles os responsáveis das respostas às questões que, 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 queiram, colar, que queiram colocar através do chat. Quero agradecer ao Giancarlo Giansante, CEO e co-founder da Edgin, e à Patrícia Nabeto, Country Manager da Edgin Portugal, a disponibilidade para estarem connosco nesta sessão. E, portanto, vamos começar com o Giancarlo. Over to you, Giancarlo. Thanks, Manuela. Thanks, uh, everyone, to, 
to spend some time to get to know Ajin and the observatory. I'm sorry, I'm still not a proficient Portuguese speaker, so uh, I'm, I, I will try to, to do my best in English. Uh, feel free to ask me for any, you know, doubts or questions. I think we can uh, we can put all the questions in the end, so we can have uh, we can try to. Uh, answer to all your um, doubts. So uh, <clears throat> the idea today is to uh, give you a quick uh, look at uh, what aging is, our methodology, uh, what we can do, what we can't do, and and then Patricia Naveto will uh, present us the first uh, edition of the Observatorio de la Publicidade for for Portugal. As Manuela said, this. Is being done in uh, in Spain since like more than two years, and we are doing this also in Italy, and it's uh, an initiative we 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 try to 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 do as she said to 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 spread some news in the market to know you know which kind of formats are most used, which sector are most active, and we thought with together with Apan that this was the right time because uh, it's always better to have a bit more light in this uh, complicated landscape of digital advertising. And with the times we have to leave uh, this period, I think it's uh, from, from our point of view, it's even more important to understand which sector are more active and which sector are more, you know, stopped. Because in the end, there's, there's also new clients and new opportunities that we can we can uh, we can check. So uh, I'll go directly to the the presentation. And um, what is judging? So we are a global uh, provider of digital advertising uh, information. Uh, we try to give you the information about your competitors. Uh, you all are, have the, the 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 information about your campaign because you can tag them, you can measure them in every possible way, which is good and it's important but we think that it's also important to know uh, what your competitors are doing so the, 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 your digital competitors your your the, the, this kind of things are important to to know i, I would i would like to know if my competitors are launching a new product or starting a new video campaign or are communicating some promotion or some some important thing about their offer so this is a bit of uh, of our mission we we, we try to improve the relation between brands uh, agencies and publishers sharing uh, an impartial uh, view of what's what's happening with digital advertising how do we do this it's we do by crawling uh, the web page that are supporting digital advertising. So it could be any publisher, any blog or YouTube or whatever. We will check later which kind of platform are included and which kind aren't. And so we have our crawler, our robots that are vis visiting every day the most important page in every market. And we are able to get all this data and separate what is content by what is advertising and we just analyze the advertising and uh, and we can then create reports in, or just put information in our tool about uh, the, the activity of every brand, every sector or every publish, publisher. So again, this, this, this has the goal to, to help uh, every digital actor, uh, mostly brands, publisher and agency, to understand better uh, the, the per, their performance compared to to compare it to the one of the of their competitors. So we we are, are digital advertising benchmarking data. That's our that's our proposal. Agent, it's uh, I don't know if we are a company startup or whatever. It's uh, everyone has a different definition. I think we are just a company. Uh, we have three years and we are a little baby in the end, but we grow quite fast. Thanks to also to, to Portugal, to be honest, which has been a market that uh, embraced earlier uh, Agin a couple of years ago. So we are already in more than 20 markets and we are uh, the, the, the official data in, in very important markets like 
Spain, which was our first market, even if I'm, I'm Italian. Uh, then we, we expand to, to Asia and Australia. And in the last year, we covered uh, the, the, all the most important markets in Europe, being now the reference in UK, Germany, France, uh, Sweden, Norway, Ireland, and uh, of course, a part of uh, Portugal, Spain, and, and Italy. Uh, we are also starting to work uh, hard in LATAM. We are official data in Mexico. We works in Puerto Rico, and we are we are planning to open all the rest of the countries with uh, also with US, Russia, and, uh, and China uh, in 2021. So it's it's a nice project that is uh, having uh, a fair uh, success in in all this market. So it's also important. I, I'm saying this not just for promotional, uh, you know, for promotional goal because also, but it's just to also give you the feeling that our methodology, methodology is coherent, it's consistent and works through di very different markets because we do the thing in the same way in Portugal than UK or then Germany or then Australia. And that's one of, I think, our strength because we demonstrate that we have a methodology that works in all kinds of markets uh, with this goal to to put a bit of light in the digital advertising landscape. So what is Ajin? Ajin actually, I put this, this image because the name of the company, it's like Gene, it's like genius in, in, a, in dialect of the Gili Island, where the, the CTO and co-founder was when he had the idea. So Ajin, we would like to be the genius of advertising. That's that's the the secret behind uh, our name. And in a nutshell, it's a tool uh, that allows user to again control both their effort, their advertising effort, but uh, always having the possibility to benchmark uh, their data with the, the their competitors or other other players how it works well i put this uh, slide that I, I i hope to be able to, to to make it clear i think it's quite easy but but let's try to to summarize together so we have a crawler which is a, a software in the end that simulate exactly the human behavior so we visit uh, all the the website that we know by our audience providers that uh, are the most visited in in every country and uh, we got to, we get to visit it. Then, uh, when we visit this publisher, we are able to see which part is is a uh, content and which part is advertising. So we stick just with the advertising, and we apply uh, in mostly automated uh, coding. What what does it mean? That we have to know that this banner or this video is, for example, BMW and is automotive because uh, otherwise we can calculate share of voices per sector and we can we will not be able to, to make brand or sector analysis. So first we get the information, we get in the same way for everyone. So this is another very important thing. Our methodology is just the same every day, always. So if there's a mistake or, um, or an error, there's the same error for everyone. So when we go to, to, to share of voices, well, normally they, they make sense. So this information is uh, coded. So we, we assign mostly automatically. So the, why it's important? Because the, the machine is always going to, to write BMW the same way. So we are not going to have BMW in capital letters and BMW in normal letters. And then we have two brands and share voices that doesn't make any sense. This is just an example. So the, the automated uh, coding actually has two big points. One is the consistency of the information, and the other one is that it's quite faster than than human being. So today we are already having all the information from from yesterday. But uh, even even if we rely on 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 the automatic coding, we have at least one person per market, which is an expert, and make quality checks and helps the machine learning to 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 learn and to code better. Then we calculate the, the ad impressions. Uh, how? We have 
uh, audience and page view estimation from different uh, audience providers. And so we assign this kind of audience to every, in this case, publisher. And so we know how to estimate every impression depending on and which page we it happened. So then you have, uh, as I said, daily report. So today you have full visibility on what happened uh, until midnight of yesterday. And then you have results in uh, both in the web-based platform, uh, or you can plan every kind of report in PDF, Excel, or whatever. So let's go a bit more in depth in, in this crawling uh, methodology. So with, uh, as, I, as I say, we have different kind of crawlers because we want to be able to get video, we want to be able to get more programmatic, we want to be able to get different things. So we have different crawlers. I can't explain actually technically how it works because it's a bit of our secret sauce, but I will just leave this on, uh, on the table. We have different kind of crawlers to try to get different kind uh, of advertising, okay? So we have, for example, no problem in uh, having mobile advertising or desktop advertising or video or static or just banner or JPG or HTML5, everything we should be able to, to get it. Then mm, we have, um, you know, it's, it's important to understand that this, this machine is working always because machines and um, they don't need vacations. So, it's the, the crawling is up 24, 24 hours per day, seven days per week, every day of the year. So we have always a consistent sample and we do always the same amount of, you know, visit trackings to try to get uh, a consistent uh, information set. Then we, we try to crawl uh, approximately uh, 1000 sites per market. But this, is, this can vary a lot market to market. On one hand, because of the different population, uh, uh, you know, it's different to measure Portugal or the US. Because in Portugal, you have less people living than, than in the US. So you, you have less website, less audience, and you have to uh, take into account. But approx, we are talking about uh, 1,000 sites per market. The other thing is that we are really open with our, our clients. So every client has full visibility on which site is included and which isn't. And if they want us to add a new site, they, they have just a section within the tool and they can just say, please add this site because I think it's important. As I said before, database is updated every, every evening at midnight. So today we are analyzing until all the information until yesterday at 12 o'clock in the night. A uh, couple of uh, information about what we crawl. We tend to crawl more than 2,500 creativities per hour, okay? Which is quite a huge number uh, when we come to compare with other kind of similar tools uh, all over the world. So let's, let's say that the, the in, until six years ago that the market leader worldwide was getting like five to 10 creative, creatives per hour. So I think the improvement, it's, it's quite huge. Uh, so we know the sites where the, 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 the banner of the video was displayed, we know the format, if it's banner, mega banner, it's a video or whatever. We know if it was uh, mobile or desktop, we know the scroll. So we know if it was the first scroll, the second scroll and the rest of the page, because we know there's different prices for, for the placement. And it's quite an important uh, measure. We have visibility, which is not viewability. So I don't, we don't, we have no tax. We have no implementation or integration with any publisher because it would uh, create uh, and not an, an impartial measurement. So we have to visit everyone in the same way. I can get uh, any data from any website because it will be uh, different. So visibility in this case, it's just an indicator that we have in our tool that gives you the, the assure you that that banner or that video was displayed uh, accordingly to the, the requirements. So, but then I don't know if you had one second of uh, views from the user or just two minutes. 
I, we, I have no tag, so we can say. And then we have kind of metrics, uh, so an estimation of the impressions, share of voices, uh, the, the media plan, and we will see a bit uh, deeper. Uh, just to make the, the first uh, summary, summary. So we try to help user uh, understand better their own digital campaign and how the competitor one are evolving. So this lets you, being a brand mostly, uh, gives you the ability to, to change it in real time because it's like having a joystick and have uh, not only, again, the visibility on your activity, but you can react of about any competitor uh, you know, news or new action or new campaign. So you can uh, really control better your budget, your efforts, and you can react better of, of what your competitors are doing. This is something quite obvious for every other kind of media, but for digital, it's still not so, but I, I guess everyone here that works with TV wants to know the, the competitor activity in TV before buying a big campaign. So this, this would be the same for, for digital. So this, all those learnings can help the brands mostly, or the agents that works for the brands in improve the uh, performance and even have a better planification for for the future so what let's go and go straight and see what what agin do and what agin don't so the do's we reports every kind of uh, advertising digital advertising again both video display native programmatic or youtube i say youtube here because uh, even if it's not a technology but it's a very important platform so I want to let you know that uh, in Agin we have really a deep uh, level of information about YouTube, both on video and display, because no one no think immediately, but uh, there's a lot of display in YouTube. There's not only video. So normally the ratio is like five, six banners per video. Because if you think about any commercial in YouTube, you are doing the video, but then you have the button, then you have a banner, then you have maybe another banner on top of the video, and then you have a button here in the channel of the brand. And all those things are actually banner that you pay somehow, or maybe with CPC uh, to Google. So we also capture every kind of ad format. So static, JPGs, PNG, GIF, HTML5, all kind of video, and also in read videos like Pits, uh, for example. Okay, that's that's important. How we do this? We know the official format uh, worldwide, so we have this definition in, into our, our system. So when we see an ad, we compare this ad with all the formats and we assign this ad to the closest format because we know maybe uh, the, the standard is 300 pixel per 80. So if we find uh, a banner which is 319 well we, we tend to to assign that format okay so what what are our limitations because everyone has also limitations so we are not measuring anything that is same uh, same or co so that we we yet yeah, we do measure everything that passed through google display network but we don't measure you know the pure search engine marketing and then the closed social media like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, just because they 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 don't allow third-party measure uh, to to go into their platform and and give to the to the brands and the agency a third-party point of view of what's happening there. So we will be we will be more than happy to have the possibility to to give third-party third-party information also about Facebook and Instagram, for example, but. Uh, still it's not technically uh, possible so it's not it's not because we don't want but it's just because uh, technically it's not uh, possible right now so uh, what is uh, uh, the best use usage for 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 agent well it's it's perfect for agency for brands and for publishers why because agencies can do better proposal to their clients or prospect because one thing is just for, to propose a, a digital campaign or digital strategy and another thing is to propose this taking into account your activity of the last three years and the activity of your competitors what they do what they did what they are going to do and so build 
uh, a more consistent strategy, then you can do a better follow up of the, the campaign and you can just give an alert in real time to your clients uh, about any competitors move and this kind of thing. So I think for agencies is uh, improve the, the customer service and uh, improve the quality of the uh, our, 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 um, our request for proposals and tenders so they can do better proposal in, in this uh, in this context for brands it's it's again it's quite easy and we have also we are happy because we love brands and we think brands are the, the fuel of our system so because the brand paid at the party as I used to say in, in, in my in my classes we have to always remember this that all our business or our sector is made with advertising money so we have to be relevant for them so for brands we we have the the the, the, um, the we are so lucky that we work also with directly with brands like movistar like santander bank or like aisha or sepsa or you know important brands so what they do with agin they they track their competitors, <laughs> which it's not, it's not just uh, you know a useless thing because it's important to you know. For example, now it's in in Spain during the pandemic, we the, the, all the telco companies like Movistar, Orange, and Vodafone, they made an agreement with the government. So they said, okay, let's let's put the focus on providing connectivity to people that are not having connectivity at home because they need. Uh, there's a lot of people that was relying all, only on the mobile but then if you have to work from home the, the mobile it's not enough you need more traffic you need you know stability so they, they decide for example to stop all the digital campaign and to focus to provide connectivity to people that were in need uh, so for example movistar is just double checking that everyone is following this this agreement so they have just set up an alert that they would uh, advise them in case uh, one of the competitors will not follow this 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 agreement. But again, uh, this is a specific case. But just being in the known about every move about from your competitors, I think it's uh, it's quite an important thing. And coming to the publisher, last but not least because we have a huge amount of publishers among our clients uh, among, across all the countries. So what they, to, they do with Agin, again, like the agency, they use the information to have a better relation with the brands and the agencies because they can provide better proposal, they can understand better the, the situation, but also they can check um, the other publishers. So if I'm publisher A, I know by adding what was done until yesterday by my competitors so i can see which brand were putting the campaign in 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 other publisher than than mine some learning from from crawls again you have total control over your digital advertising both display and video ad campaigns you where exactly where your ads are running that's another big thing <laughs> most of the time we do campaigns but we don't know where they they went in the end so here we, we yes we can uh, we are able to do this we will see that we have also real screenshot of, of the campaigns also it sheds light on on where your programmatic ads are appearing which again it's it's not a secondary thing because Again, if we do a performance campaign, a CPC campaign, there's someone that think that well, it, a click is a click. I don't, I don't care if it was generated by uh, a premium publisher or just any kind of web page. Well, to me, it's different. It's not the same if I put my advertising in New York Times or in my personal blog, <laughs> because uh, with, with all the love I, I, I can have to my personal blog, I think that New York Times. Uh, it's more important than if someone so see a campaign in the New York Times and in my blog, I think New York Times give it give to this campaign more you know appear appeal or more you know importance. Also, every, there's always a big debate. Now there's video, there's a, a JPG, there's HTML5. Well, we have deterministic information about 
which ad formats are the most used without any uh, doubt. And then again, sorry to, to repeat, but this is the big thing. You will be able to understand all the campaigns run by your competitors, which is again, a very important thing that we want to do for every kind of media, but digital. And I really think it's important also for, for digital. So let's go finishing this, this part. And uh, again, it's a list of things we, 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 we see that our clients are doing with our data. So, you know, providing client with strategic insights, as I said before, uh, not just uh, selling a campaign with the best CPC or CPM, but being strategic about digital because it makes the difference, believe me. Uh, again, you can create more convincing pieces, uh, proposal that sounds better and win more RF RFP. Um, you can have a different and better client engagement because you can provide every day with uh, third party information that it's better than a screenshot made by myself. So you can validate and better the efforts made by the agencies because this is another pain point normally in the relation between the brand and the agency. And we want to put uh, some positive thing because if the agency and the brand are sharing the same information, they will have a better conversation. They will understand each other better because as I'm working with both uh, kind of client, I know that everyone loves the other, but then there's always a good amount of tension because you don't understand thing, you have the data, the other one is providing you other data. So having a common database, well, helps you to, to have a better relation and a better conversation between brands and agencies, which is a key point to me. Uh, also for publishers, it, uh, it can help you to know the inventory available in your side and in other publisher. You can create marketing materials and again, you can optimize the performance of every digital display and, and video campaign. Just imagine that I'm planning for today my biggest campaign and, and suddenly I know because a tool tell me that, okay, okay, look, your competitor is starting a big campaign today too. So you, if you want to be relevant, you can just Okay, I have to double the amount of my budget to, be, to have more share of voice. Or maybe you can say, okay, I will wait three days them to spend all their money and then I will have all the publisher for me. So this is strategic vision on about digital advertising. And you can, it can really help you to, to save money and achieve your goals in, in a better way. Those are just some of our clients worldwide. So we, as you can see, we work with brands, with big, the biggest agencies and with publishers, with uh, TVs, with uh, you know, uh, publishers that are more into paper. We try to work with, with, with everyone and we are happy to, to, to have this kind of, of relation with, with our clients. So uh, I'm just going, if you want to make like a very quick demo, I'm taking like three minutes just to show some real uh, snapshot of, of the tool. So I'm going to share, uh, change the screen and now share the, the tool. So you should see now Edgin. So you can see that here we have like, this is the homepage where you have the, 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 the search engine. So you can just search here uh, a brand, okay? Or you can, uh, you can just check uh, any kind of concept or any kind of um, product everywhere, everything you will just see from 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 here but then you can go let's let's go this for for example from macro, macro to, to micro so the the first thing we can see if for example talking about brands we have uh and this is will be the base of what patricia will present to you in two minutes which is the observatory but here we have you know the first estimation of the activity of 
uh, sectors by more. So you can you can easily see that uh, now we are in this pandemic. This is data from April. So entertainment and editorial are, are having way more space than automotive or, or other kind of classic categories. If we go, for example, from to December 2019, we can see that, for example, distribution was the leader, and it's you know Christmas, so it makes makes sense. Or so this is a, a nice way to understand which are the sector most active. But we want to know more, so let's go and see. Uh, you know, for example, for finance sector, which are the um, the most active brands uh, in the sector, where they put their impressions, which ad server they use, where they put the banner, and which were the keywords related to their, their campaign, because we have also this nice qualitative analysis. So again, to me, it's important if uh, to know if I'm associated with something that it's coherent with my uh, products or or if I'm just associating with very wrong thing. So it could happen <laughs> with programmatic. So it's, it's, it's again, a very, I guess, nice way to, to check uh, this kind of information. Now we are analyzing the sector, but you would be able to make this analysis at brand level, campaign level, or publisher level, or, or website level. Then we can see, for example, all the brands with this sector. In this case, they are uh, sort by activity, and you can see also the, the pie chart and go uh, brand by brand and understand the pressure. Or you can go and see all the creativities, creative, sorry, uh, of this sector in, in, in April. Or we would be able just to show the videos. Uh, and for even each of them, you know which uh, campaign is coming from, you know, as I said before, the, the format, you know, it's a skyscraper, it's HTML5, it was served both in mobile and desktop and it generated approximately this number of, of, of impression. Or you can go campaign by campaign and you can have way more information. So for example, just this campaign of we think uh, we can see the estimation of the impression day by day. We can see the landing page because we, we know that the landing page is temporary. So we, we do screenshots. Uh, you, you have all the, the banners that uh, were put into this campaign. If it's, uh, there's animation, you can see also the animation. And you have the, 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 the media plan of the campaign. Or you can even see um, Screen, real screenshot if we will go there here and see where was the the campaign uh, exactly in, in the real page. Then you have also uh, a summary of the placement so you can see uh, this campaign if it was more first scroll, second scroll or the rest of the page or you can even check uh, for each each publisher, each website uh, how they, 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 they perform with, with the scroll. And as I said, you have also the context of the campaign. So, you know, this campaign, uh, uh, if it was related with, with uh, a couple of things or, or other, other things, then you would be able to go further and analyze uh, more things and generate a reports alert. But uh, I don't want to, to, to spend more time talking and um, we would be able that we will be more than happy to, to set up uh, any calls you want uh, to go in, in depth and uh, make uh, deeper demos of, of, of the tool. So I would uh, again go back to the presentation and uh, I'm really, really happy to present this because it's a, a project that uh, we, we spend a lot of time to, to set up, but uh, we really, so we are really happy today to to see it live and having this, uh, you know, the opportunity to present uh, to all of you. So again, thank you for your time and um, giving the 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 turn of to, to talk to to Patricia. Patricia, please feel free to to speak in Portuguese. Okay. And <laughs> uh, so this is the first version of the digital 
uh, observatory for digital advertising in uh, in uh, in Portugal, made by Japan in partnership with with Agin. So we are really uh, proud to to do this with Japan. And thank you again, Manuela and Olapan, to 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 count on 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 us. So please, Patricia, I will start. No, thank you. You really, we are really <laughs> proud of this. So, Patricia, please, uh, can you explain a bit uh, which kind of information we have, and tell me when you want to go to the next uh, slide, please? Yes. Bem, antes de mais vou começar uh, uh, por agradecer a presença a todos. Vejo aqui, vejo, não vejo, mas <risos> vejo aqui no chat muitas, muitos nomes conhecidos. Uh, grande parte de uh, uh, agências em representação dos seus clientes. Fico muito feliz por isso e, e também há alguns anunciantes. Uh, é com enorme satisfação que eu estou aqui hoje a promover este lançamento do Observatório Digital da Publicidade. É um projeto muito querido, que tem sido uh, trabalhado com a APAN, que quero desde já agradecer e pessoalmente à Manuela uh, por uh, encabeçar, no fundo, o lançamento desta iniciativa, que eu acredito ser uma milestone para a indústria da advertising digital, uma indústria na qual trabalho há mais de 20 anos e que uh, uh, tenho vindo a, a, a perceber, uh, porque já estive em vários lados da, da brincada, como a informação e a data é uh, cada vez mais importante para quem está, como uh, estão aqui os presentes nesta, nesta reunião, agências e anunciantes a trabalhar no sentido de conseguir uh, otimizar os seus investimentos. Um, trabalho com a Edgina há cerca de três anos e, e trazer uh, para o mercado de Portugal o Observatório da, da, da Publicidade Digital numa altura como esta, onde a indústria, como todos sabemos, tem enormes desafios, é ainda motivo de maior orgulho. Este Observatório da Publicidade Digital, como a Manuela disse, vai ser publicado mensalmente e tem como objetivo ser uma montra, chamemos-lhe assim, daqueles que são os principais indicadores motorizados pelo Edgin. O João Carlos já vos fez uma, uma apresentação daquela que é a nossa metodologia e com base na, na metodologia de crawling que o Edgin utiliza, nós temos a capacidade de promover um, estatísticas mensais que vão monitorizar desde o total de campanhas ativas, por exemplo no mês de abril tivemos 32.646 uh, campanhas ativas em Portugal. Também dizer-vos que as campanhas ativas que estão neste observatório têm, estão diretamente relacionadas com a forma como é, é feita a indexação destas campanhas pela nossa plataforma, que é com base em landing pages, depois obviamente posso disponibilizar mais informações ou coloquem perguntas mais técnicas no chat que estou disponível para responder. Um, e apresentando assim de forma muito genérica, uh, no, no, quando vermos a uh, um, representatividade por setor, como o Jancar também já disse, já fez um pouco de prova, no mês de abril nós temos uh, o setor de entretenimento a encabeçar um, uh, este observatório com um share of voice de 8.8%, com 67, 67 marcas que anunciaram e com 202 campanhas. Uh, no setor de entretenimento estão um, uh, uh, anunciantes como betting, como pronto, casinos online, como alguns projetos de entretenimento. Em mídia estão, que é o segundo, a segunda posição ocupada neste, neste ranking, o ranking vai ter apenas o top 10 okay, dos setores e depois obviamente na plataforma, os nossos clientes têm acesso às estatísticas que vocês viram, mas o nosso ranking para já vai ser dos top 10 e mídia, que onde estão desde empresas editoriais até empresas de HBO, Netflix, entretenimento genérico, nesta altura de, de abril encabeça o segundo lugar e, e é muito interessante ver quando se tem acesso também a dados anteriores realmente como é que o mercado está um, particularmente atípico, ok? Pronto. As instituições e estados estão aqui, temos empresas como a Santa Casa, que bem ou mal continua, como vocês sabem, a anunciar com algumas campanhas institucionais, um, mas, uh, e depois o setor financeiro, que tipicamente está no top 3, eu tenho que vos dizer, e no, nos dados uh, que, que, que temos na plataforma, também aproveitar para vos dar esta informação, portanto nós temos plataforma, uh, temos dados desde 2017 uh, no Edgin em Portugal, que podem ser consultados com os nossos clientes. Eu gosto, uh, uh, e que não vão ser uh, realizados neste observatório, porque vai ser de, 
2020 para a frente, mas gosto sempre de dar esta tónica porque acho que é interessante às vezes para fazer algumas análises comparativas, ainda que sejam sempre tidos, seja necessário ter algumas ressalvas no que diz respeito à base de dados, porque, enfim, nós mudámos de provider este ano e pode haver algumas necessidades de esclarecimento em algumas dimensões do estudo. Um, e, so, Giancarlo, can you pass down? Yep. So basically, so, ok. Uh, portanto, para além dos setores, o Observatório Digital da Publicidade vai ainda eh, eh, identificar aqueles que foram os principais formatos utilizados pelos anunciantes em Portugal. Um, e uh, só para também vos dizer que nós. Um, quando temos a capacidade de, de, de fazer crawling de todos os formatos IAB Standard, de resto temos uma parceria estratégica também com o IAB em vários mercados, e em abril o nosso conhecido MREC, que não há nenhum mercado que eu chame assim, foi o principal formato utilizado em publicidade de display, obviamente que seguido da Alfbanner, Speed Screen, Speed Screen Mega Banner, Billboard e Square. Portanto, este também é muito interessante perceber que, em função um pouco dos, dos meses e do, do tipo e da, e da sazonalidade, estes formatos têm vindo a mudar ao longo do tempo. Portanto, eu acho que este observatório vai ser interessante também para ajudar as agências e os anunciantes a perceberem como é que a indústria se movimenta em termos de. De, de, de formatos de, 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 essencialmente de display, ainda que tínhamos, como o Jancar disse muito mais, cada vez mais uh, na nossa plataforma, por exemplo, formatos nativos. Uh, é engraçado que há cerca de um ano e pouco vimos assim um boost de formatos nativos, agora uh, também continuamos a ter, uh, mas não com um crescimento tão associado. Portanto, todas estas tendências, no fundo, que acabam, acabam por ser, em Portugal ainda uma black box, nós estamos a acompanhar uh, há algum tempo e é muito bom trazer aqui uh, à luz de todos aquilo que são as principais um, uh, tendências de investimento dos anunciantes. Depois temos ainda também a identificação da localização, portanto o, o nosso crawler tem, é, tem a capacidade de identificar um, três níveis, uh, first, second e third uh, uh, nível de, de placement dos anúncios, o que é que isto quer dizer? Quer dizer se é above the, 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 the screen ou um clique ou baixo e, e, e aqui uh, vamos mais uma vez uh, pegar nos tops de 10 que viram em cima no setor nos setores que identificámos e perceber como é que no fundo eles distribuem. Quem, quem faz media buying sabe bem porque é que isto é importante, não é? Porque quando estamos numa altura onde um, investimentos de performance e com alguns modelos uh, mais um, CPC versus uh, CPM, percebemos que este third, la third layer uh, começa a ganhar peso. É também interessante depois perceber comparativamente com outros momentos uh, mais ricos, como é o que vivemos agora, chamamos-lhe assim, uh, como é que uh, há a dispersão por estes por estes três um, uh, tipos de placement, e um, vemos, por exemplo, aqui que o setor de, de... Isto acontece quase de forma regular, quando conseguimos perceber e analisar os dados de forma temporal, um, que os setores financeiros, os automóveis, tendencialmente têm muito mais localizações em, em, em first scroll do que second e third. Um, Giancarlo, can you pass down? Uh, e finalmente, temos também a identificação neste observatório digital das campanhas que foram exibidas de forma não programática, uh, que em abril foram cerca de 58%, uh, parcialmente exibidas de forma programática, 32%, e totalmente programáticas. O que é que isto quer dizer traduzido por miúdos? Uh, portanto, uh, o nosso caller identifica se uh, as campanhas foram parte programática, quer dizer que há uma parte da campanha que uh, foi servida um, e, e, uh, em, em plataformas programáticas que nós temos mapeadas na nossa, na nossa, na nossa, uh, nos nossos, na nossa base de dados e uh, outra parte que foi exibida pelos publishers diretamente identificamos e, e conseguimos trazer uh, esta análise. Este, este tipo de análise, por exemplo, uh, é algo que uh, é possível também consultar diretamente no, na, na, na nossa plataforma, uh, mas que aqui, uh, de forma agregada, eu acho que é um indicador uh, muito interessante para o setor, porque todos nós sabemos que uh, o programático um, tem tido um crescimento grande em Portugal, uh, tem momentos, 
tem ainda algumas questões que têm que ser abordadas do lado de, do, dos anunciantes e das agências e portanto eu acho que este indicador é, é com certeza podem ter algumas dúvidas uh, mais detalhadas sobre eles, mas é um indicador um, que, que eu acho que revela a, a realidade do mercado uh, português e, e, e é muito interessante ver como é que ele tem evoluído ao, ao longo do tempo e eu espero que daqui a nos próximos observatórios consigamos também perceber um, para onde é que ele vai. Depois, finalmente, também uh, nós temos a, a possibilidade de identificar uh, os dispositivos uh, por campanha e a maior parte das uh, campanhas um, estão um, portanto, uh, exibidas, são, são cross-device, não é? 46%, um, e, e essa é a tendência, não é? Uh, o mobile uh, um, está a crescer, uh, é verdade, um, mas tendencialmente existem uh, campanhas que vão às duas plataformas e por isso uh, este é o número que uh, assume 46%. Finalmente, o João Carlos também já tinha falado disto, nós, nós temos a capacidade de ler a metadata do, 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 de onde, onde caem os anúncios, de forma muito simples, e, e esta análise contextual é algo que eu um, considero muito interessante. Portanto, mais uma vez, para efeitos deste observatório digital, nós vamos só comunicar aquilo que é a análise contextual do primeiro setor, o setor que ocupa o número no ranking, que é entretenimento, e, e, e porquê que é, é importante? Porque, uh, um, uh, e nós sabemos que uh, para um anunciante é muito importante uh, não só uh, reach, se for uma campanha que tem esse objetivo, uh, mas também uh, o conteúdo onde o seu, uh, um, as suas campanhas são exibidas. E esta análise contextual é, tem uma informação riquíssima, que pode ser utilizada para otimização é, por parte das agências e pode ser utilizada de forma também muito valiosa é, pelos mais que, 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 que queiram ir ao encontro é, daquilo que são as é, audiências e as segmentações que os seus clientes procuram. Portanto, casar e encontrar estes dados... Uh, neste caso em concreto é apenas um setor, mas nós, se granalizarmos isto como nós temos uh, uh, na nossa plataforma, a nível da campanha, a nível do anunciante, nós conseguimos ter insights riquíssimos para conseguir uh, otimizar, não só em termos de, um, numéricos, mas também qualitativos, aquilo que pode ser o matching uh, uh, das audiências que o um anunciante quer e que, e que um, um publisher promove. Um, sobretudo quando uh, pensamos em publishers com grandes long tails e que, enfim, um, uh, têm uh, ali muita, muita diversidade um, de, 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 de conteúdo. Um, em termos muito sucintos, estes são os indicadores que nós vamos promover. São, como disse, uma montra, uh, podem ser entendidos como um. São já uma grande milestone. Nós temos, obviamente, como vocês viram, muito mais data. Um, e, e eu acho que é um princípio uh, de. E vejo aqui já algumas perguntas a falar sobre isso e que estava. Depois agora vou mudar para inglês para, para o João Carlos poder perguntar. São um princípio daquilo que eu acho que seguramente vamos conseguir ter em Portugal e já estamos a fazer em outros países que é, temos já em alguns países com os dados do Edgin projetos de estimativa de investimento de publicitário, portanto isto é um caminho que começámos agora é, e, e acho que a, a APAN tem um papel fundamental neste neste, 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 neste processo porque pela primeira vez conseguimos ter uma plataforma que é independente, porque como o João Carlos explicou, nós, os nossos scrollers não precisam de tags, é uma das perguntas que também está aqui nos, nos chat e que eu estou já a responder. Exato. Já está a responder. Um, algumas, desculpa, mas, mas é muito bom termos uma plataforma em Portugal que pode fazer um, este uh, disclosure. Não há plataformas perfeitas e nós temos com certeza também alguns pontos uh, que, que, que estamos em contínua melhoria, mas a verdade é que como o João Carlos disse, passámos já aquela barreira de sermos uma startup para sermos uma grande empresa e estamos muito felizes por estar aqui também em Portugal com esta representatividade. Um, portanto, em relação ao observatório, é isto que eu queria apresentar-vos e dar-vos a conhecer. Um, é apenas uma janela, mas acho que é uma janela muito importante 
para Portugal e para a indústria digital que eu acho que tem tudo para crescer ainda mais agora, depois desta... desta, desta... É, exatamente, Patrícia. Obrigada, antes de mais, aos dois. Eu acho que esta informação que nós vamos disponibilizar mensalmente permite-nos ao longo do tempo ficar, na verdade, com uma ideia muito mais precisa daquilo que está a acontecer em Portugal, porque nós sabemos que, que cada vez há mais marcas a, a comunicar no digital, mas sabemos muito pouco sobre, sobre as condições em que, que estão a ser um, utilizadas, mas acima de tudo ficamos com uma, ficamos com uma tendência, não é? A nós, enquanto a PAN, um, o objetivo era, como disseste bem, ter, ter uma montra, ou pelo menos dizer que, de facto, isto é o que está a acontecer em, em Portugal, depois mais detalhe não nos cabia a nós um, a apresentar, um, mas, mas pelo menos já ficamos com uma ideia de que um, uh, Portugal já está a investir e vamos acompanhar ao longo do tempo um, esse, esse, nível, esse nível de investimentos. Uh, o Francisco colocou aqui algumas questões que eu penso que um, já todas terão sido um, respondidas, mas ainda assim, ainda assim um, a questão que, que, que ele coloca primeiro sobre se um, a Edgine precisa da autorização, um, vou dizer em inglês, que a pergunta está em inglês e se calhar pode encarar melhor. Jacob, the question uh, is uh, if sites must provide acceptance for edgine uh, crawlers or if it is in independent? Uh, no, it's, it's, it's fully it. independent because we, we really uh, make a, a very limited amount of visits, so we are not going to, to create uh, any issues with this, but we, we just visit every day, every publisher, the, the enough just to have uh, almost all the campaigns that were served there. But yeah, the we, second we, question was, was about prog programmatic, and I yeah. think it's... Uh... Yeah, that's the, the, the first thing is this, so we, there's nothing straight here, just visiting like, uh, like a user, uh, every, every publisher, so we don't do anything strange in, in, in this. And, and for programmatic, Well, we, we, we try to <clears throat> estimate it in the best possible way, taking into account uh, a quite a good number of factors. So we have uh, our own algorithm that estimates what it's programmatic and what it's direct. So for example, we have different kind of cases. Let's make some examples. If we see uh, a campaign only in one publisher during one month, well, we tend to think that it's a direct deal with with uh, the publisher so this is the the best possible case or if we so as we have also the ad server information related to to every creative that we, we measure we know uh, the the nature of this ad server so if uh, it's a programmatic ad server well we will know that it's programmatic uh, and this is those are the, the easiest case because yeah. It's, yeah. it's when it's clearly direct or programmatic. The, the thing is, uh, it makes it a bit more complicated when you have uh, different kind of things. But we also, for example, take into account that ad choice is triangle. So we know that if there's ad choice is triangle, it's, it's programmatic. Uh, and then the algorithm made, makes a lot of analysis and checks in time period to, to understand what was programmatic and, and what was not. And the last thing about programmatic, as I said, as I said before, we, uh, we, are, we have crawlers, not crawler, okay? And that's one of the things uh, related with programmatic. So even if the sample will be always a sample, but we have a reasonable sample about programmatic because we put in every market, different crawlers that uh, replicate different behaviors. So we have crawlers that like sports, crawlers that like series, or crawlers that like news, or that kind of news. So in this case, we are able to understand which campaign were served to this crawler and which one were served to the general one. So that's another way to score what is programmatic than, uh, than what is direct.
it's a lot of things that we take into account to to come to come out with a best possible estimation. Yeah. Just to just to clarify uh, and to answer uh, another question, if uh, share of voice equals investment, no, it's not the no, same no. thing. It's that's not the same thing. that's. Thank you for the question. This is one of the most important thing. And sorry to not have explained on this before. It's my bad. Uh, the, the share of voices in Agile right now are calculated on top of the, the occupation, so the the, 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 the the impressions. But then we know that an impression can cost a thing or totally another thing. So if we are paying an impression of video in the homepage of one of the best publishers in Portugal, the cost of that impression would be very different from an impression, again, made in my personal blog. So uh, we have to take into account that we are talking about the, the, the occupation of the advertising, so the, 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 the impression and not the investment. The, the one typical question from our client, it's all come, come always from video. So they say, ah, you are saying that video, it's like 4% of the digital advertising in, in this country. Uh, while it's for us, it's 70, 60%. Well, in Spain, uh, it's it's very possible that 60% is video, but the number of, of impressions generated by videos, normally it's uh, between 2 or 5% depending on, on the country. So both things are correct, <laughs> but our share of voices uh, today are, are calculated just on some of the estimation of the impression and not on which kind of impression uh, we are analyzing. I don't know if I made myself clear. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So that's not possible to estimate ad, exp ad expansion. It's expansion. possible. It's possible. We are working also on this. We have two different um, algorithms. So one is made to estimate the, the, the occupation or the impressions, and the other one tends to transform uh you know those impressions in in spam so no. i hope i hope we will be able to to propose to Apan and all our clients in portugal to have another webinar and and on get that. to know on and that. get to know how we can how we can do <laughs> this i have to be honest i don't like to over promising but the the, the the algorithm it's it's already in place so we are testing this in all the countries and the the, the test are uh, right. really nice results so now we are in the phase to uh, double check uh, the outcome of our estimation with our real clients in order to to understand uh, how accurate uh, right. this this estimation is the, the thing is in in spain uh, we are already providing this kind of figures uh, in this case to uh, iab spain uh, and because in Spain, uh, IAB is responsible to to make the, the most important uh, you know report about the total digital spend in, in this market. So uh, this year, uh, I was really proud because we we, we was the only source uh, taking into account to 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 get this data, and this report was produced by Price Waterhouse Cooper. So. It was uh, an IAB material uh, elaborated by Price with IGIN data. So we know that uh, this methodology works and uh, it's already it's already in place in Spain. Clients uh, are not still having the access to this information, but uh, we do. And you know, if we pass the, also the the filter of Price, that really had to check uh, with all the players here the figures and, and finally they decide to go with us well we are very confident yeah. that uh, we will be able to provide this worldwide uh, right in q4 q4 we have here, uh, um Giancarlo, we have here another uh, a very interesting question um because uh, it's uh, it's an issue that um, for advertisers is uh, quite important and it's about uh, what can you do uh, uh, to decrease the level of fraud? What are the tools that you may use or you are using? Uh, and, your, and what's your experience and results uh, in, in, in other markets? That's a very interesting question too. And uh, I, 
I, I was saying I love out fraud. No, I, I don't love fraud. I love to study this to try to not to help our clients not having problems. So we have a kind of good number of cases in, in this sense, mostly with brands, of course. Uh, so Agim is able to, to help a bit uh, because on, on one hand, we have real screenshot. I mean, we, 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 we have like big samples of campaigns. So uh, as we track a lot of information for every banner, we know which provider uh, published this banner, which that server and, and everything. So uh, when, when it comes to be compared with uh, the media plan owned by the brand, uh, it's quite easy to check. Uh, not easy, but it's, it's possible to check differences by, between what the brand bought and what the, the brand got. Also because there's times where the brand is not, uh, has not in his, in his hand all the information about uh, where it was uh, every impression. So uh, already Agin, uh, it's, uh, it's a tool that can help you. For example, Movistar in uh, in Spain use it a lot in this way. Uh, Movistar, you know, every, I think everyone knows Telefonica even in Portugal is the, the leader provider for communication in Spain. But in Spain, they are also the owner of the pay TV. Okay, so they they have Canal Plus, okay, which is now called Movistar Plus, and uh, it's where you see you know football or um, first. Uh, first time movie in TV. So the, the premium content, the pay content in, in TV is provided also by Movistar, Movistar TV. So they really don't like to put, uh, for example, the advertisement in web page that are, uh, they are putting uh, in a pirate way, football or, or, or movies. So we set up a crawler that navigate all those blacklist sites and we can spot every every appearance of every brand in any kind of website. So, uh, we this is a special request or oh, we, have, we have a standard we we have a standard blacklist. So we okay. always do this, but then uh, every client can add uh, more sites to this blacklist. We we have two two level. We have a blacklist and brown list. So All blacklist right. is like illegal. So it's like porn. It's like uh, pirate content. It's something that we know that no one wants to go with this. Yeah. With the, the, their ads there. So blacklist is blacklist. And then there's brown list, which you know are more controversial pages, but they are not doing anything illegal. So yeah. there are brands that they say they, they, they think they can go there, or brands that say no, 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 I don't want to go near there because brain safety for me, it's it's very important. So. This way we can, for example, set up an automatic alert. So every time your or your competitor banner or video goes to one of those page, you got an alert with the screenshot mm -hmm. and with all the links. So you can call okay. your provider and ask yeah. them what's happened because it could be just a problem, could be an issue, could be everything. Digital advertising, it, it's complicated. There's, there's, most of the cases there's no a guilty person it's always a chain there's so many actors involved and uh, it's it's the, 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 most of the time there are just issues there is not fraud but if you are a brand and you are in the known you can uh, solve every problem we had we had uh, one of the most worldwide brand that works for us you can see the name that this client of, of of Agin in Spain, I didn't mention before, so I can tell the story. Uh, they are really one of the most important worldwide brands and they really care about brain safety. And they were going to porn pages a lot. <laughs> and we discovered this, we informed them, and then they, they work with, in partnership with their agency, which is also a client of ours, and we found all together the problem, which was not the agency, not the brand, not, not ourselves. We are just checking, you know. So both having yeah. the, the same information, they, yeah. they they came with solution and they solved exactly. this. So this is yeah. the ideal, the ideal case. So we can do a lot uh, in terms of this, and and a lot of times 
because we have a lot of experts in, in our in our team and we are performing every day uh, analysis comparing ad serving data with our data with third party data so even if we are not consulting we are not providing this kind of service but if we can we are more than happy to share this kind of insights yeah. or to make yeah, a, that, is very, that is a very uh, interesting uh, and we, we do we do every every day for 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 all the clients in, in every country because it's it's important because most of the time there's it's not easy to spot which is the problem yeah, yeah. we have to check we know we already have our methodology to double check everything yeah. so we yeah but it's, are, it's important enough to have another webinar about this about that yes <laughs> whenever you want whenever you want we also work in partnership I actually have a webinar uh, next Monday in uh, in Spain uh, with a partner of ours that it's called AdWatch. So I've seen that. I've seen oh. the, uh, the announcement of that webinar. Yes. Ah, great. So they they are very complementary because we we work for track every campaign and the competitors yeah. where they just develop uh, a blockchain solution to just uh, have a, a, another measurement of your own campaigns. Yeah. So, so yeah. a bit more transparent and with their system. So what we are working is to link the two systems to give like a 360 degree uh, control of, of brain safety. But uh, the, unfortunately, uh, I, I know a lot about ad fraud because okay. I had to discover a lot of cases. So feel yeah. free to Let set me, up a data. Yeah. I can even invite uh, experts because Okay. It's, it's it's what we do. It's what we do in the end because most of the case, and I'm going to finish this, but just to make you make it clear because it's our day by day. So everything starts because the client sends you something that your data is wrong. So okay, yeah. let's yeah. let's check and double check, and then we discover things. So we are discovering things since 2016. Every day we discover something, uh, and we are working in different countries. So. We can yeah. even say in which country, which kind of yeah. ad fraud is more popular. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Let me just add that, that one of the advantage, Manuela, is that a backlist is not the same for one advertiser or other. Of course, of course. You know, porn is a backlist for the majority of, the one of them, but there are other, well, you know, typologies of backlist. And because we have had in our database, whatever the advertiser or the agencies is, um, is asking basically we can add all the, the crawlers uh, that are important to for instance measure fraud for a particular advertiser that's a huge thing because usually you know so some platforms are you know they, they just have a, a group of uh, of database that is completely closed and the clients cannot actuate on that so that's not the case for us so we work on a you know very custom demands and needs and the, the, the tool is prepared to do so uh, on one stand and the other thing that I think that is super useful also is because um, as Giancarlo mentioned we are um, in many countries right so in this regard it's also very important to know uh, uh, the, the most trendy uh, websites for for fraud yeah. and we can export knowledge yeah. from one market to the other so it's also yeah. a big yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, advantage. So Thank before you for the you... question, Joao. <laughs> yeah. And before you, before we leave, uh, we have another question. Is that is uh, if you can uh, do a media audit, uh, media audit. Uh, that means crossing and checking the media plan um, with uh, with real results, or or you just supply the tool we, for we have... someone to do the media audit. Well, this is more or less related to the other thing. So. We are not consultants. Consultants. Yeah. We 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 don't sell this kind of service, but every day is needed because uh, most of the times there are fair uh, questions from our clients, and it needs uh, an audit to 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 double check our figures yeah. and understand what happened. So it's not the service that we that you provide yeah we provide but yes we, we do but yeah. but yeah. we do every day for our clients so uh, i had uh, a long call the, this morning with a big agency here because we were looking after a problem that they had with big brand here in spain and we spent last two weeks 
uh, doing cross checks between the, the plan, the, the media, you know, the, the media plan, the, the regional plan, the, the results they have from one server, the results they have from us. And so even if we are not paid for it, but we, end, yeah. we are ending doing this yeah. Uh, yeah. At, at a daily level, a daily okay. basis. So it's, it's right. also, you know, the only way we have to have a double check of our data because we provide estimation. So it's also great for us to, to, to work with this kind of data because we can even understand always together with clients the level of accuracy. So normally after yeah. this kind of analysis, we always do improve a bit something. So, so that means that we've opened this uh, uh, box of Pandora. <laughs> so there's a lot of new things to, uh, to, 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 to learn from, uh, from here. I'm very happy that um, we have already launched our uh, Observatorio da Publicidade Digital, which I think it's a very, start, a very good starting point for a lot of um, other related uh, uh, topics that, uh, that we would like to discuss uh, in, in the association and with our members. So um, um, I'm counting on you for um, next, um, for, for develop new uh, webinars and, dis and continue this discussion, which is very, uh, very, very yeah. So um, thank I'm you. more than happy to, you to share much. my time with yeah. you. And again, thank yeah. you, Manuela. Thank you, Apan. Yeah. And thank you to everyone. Thank you that, to uh, uh, Giancarlo and Patricia. Today. Thank you for your. And uh, we keep in touch. And you thank too. you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Obrigada a todos pela vossa presença e até breve. Obrigado. Obrigado. Obrigada. Até breve. Obrigada.